for Cutting Edge Consciousness with Freeman Michaels and Barnett Bain. Thought-provoking discussions and bold ideas from the edge of possibility. And welcome to Cutting Edge Consciousness. Freeman Michaels here. With Barnett Bain. A good moment, everyone. Good moment. It's good to be here with you, Freeman. I like the jaunty, uh, what do they call that? Is that a tam? Or, it's not really a I tam. I don't know. It's, uh, but it's, it's a hat. It's jaunty. I like your shirt. You do, do you? Simplicity. T. That's Simplicity. cute. Indeed. Indeed. So, you know, uh, I figure if I wear it, maybe I'll, <laughs> maybe try, I'll be maybe able I, to embody it, it. I'll embody it a little bit. I'll remember it. <laughs> it's yeah. like a reminder. It's a little Except mnemonic. every time you look in the mirror, you, have to, you look at it back. <laughs> <laughs> so I, every time I, I remind myself to tea, I'm... Sp- <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And I'm doing oh, that very well. Good. <laughs> it's working. It's working good. out great for me. So we've had an interesting ride lately. You and I have gotten to spend some time, what, yeah. our weekend uh, uh, yeah. away. And then this good. last weekend, we were uh, in the presence of a... Um, uh, leader. A, a leader. A leader. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's um, that's so. We were invited. We were both invited to uh, listen to... Uh, a speaker, a teacher, yeah. and um, and I certainly enjoyed it very much. I mm. did, and I enjoyed seeing so many um, in the room who uh, who are my friends. So many friends in the room that was really a delight, and I enjoyed listening to him very much. Uh, you and I were struck. We spoke afterwards, and we were both struck by the same thing, and that is the willingness that people have. Uh, and I certainly recognize this tendency in myself as well, to um, to look outside themselves, to mm. to the 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 thirst for knowledge is uh, is uh, it is so intense mm. that um, very often we uh, think we found the well um, before you know prematurely. I mean, I guess this is another way of saying that it's very easy to give away power to uh, outside authorities. And the distinction, there are distinctions to be made between bona fide um, guides Hmm. and helpers Hmm. and our relationship with uh, those helpers and those teachers. And... um, and our and 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 the tendency to sometimes just want to give away power to become um, um, a follower or you know this sort. Well, that, that was that was a challenge I had. Mm-hmm. So look, I'm going to shoot a little straighter. Yeah, uh, this guy was somewhat of a guru, and he had uh, from India, and he had some wisdom, and and there's no question his wisdom was in moments for me very profound. But the, there's a few challenges I had. One is that he introduced that we're going to have a conversation, but there was no conversation. He was going, any questions he had, had uh, uh, were a lead in mm-hmm. to one of his answers. Mm-hmm. So he was full of answers, which, you know, I, I love answers, but the answer for me has to have space so that it can be an answer when applied to a particular situation, and but not the answer in other circumstances, or that... Um, there are always higher truths, is what you're saying. Yeah, well, even just offering... So, look, here's where I'm at in my own yeah. personal development. I have opportunities to speak and to teach and, and so forth, as do you. And I always want to offer my ideas. Just offer them. And and that people can have other ideas. I'm not making my ideas, my truth, as it were, higher. And I didn't love the evening. I mean, I loved seeing you, and there were things that he said that I thought were profound. But mostly, I didn't want to be indoctrinated. I, I kind of wanted to get out of there, mm. if I'm honest, mm-hmm. you know, because um, because it was into conversation and who I was and where I was coming from was of zero interest to that guy, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. truth be told. So I, I, I get how you were kind of leading in. Um, I didn't have I, I wasn't I didn't have as strong a, a, a an experience, as strong a reaction to the experience. Uh, yeah, I sort of flowed through it. And uh, well, look, I could put the clutch in on this, too. I mean, there were moments in the evening where I was really intrigued with what he had to say. But I guess for me, I don't want to what you were just saying in the very beginning is I don't want to self abandon. I don't want to give up where I am in my life. I want to take things in that meet me where I'm at versus ha- feel like I have to suspend. That takes Go ahead. Uh, quite a bit of uh, maturity. And it also takes uh, requires in the part of um, 
the giver of wisdom, hmm. um, uh, a tremendous amount of awareness and, uh, and maturity and, um, and the ability to uh, moderate, to wait at the edge of somebody else's growth and yes. not, to, uh, not to violate it. Or, but so we uh, have the perfect guest. We do have the perfect <laughs> guest. So what a coincidence. Yes. So we're thrilled uh, to have our, our dear friend Daryl Anka back with us today on Cutting Edge Consciousness. And uh, uh, those of you who, are, um, who tune in regularly to this show know Daryl well. Uh, Daryl is an, an author, a filmmaker. He is also well known as uh, the uh, channel for Bashar. And we're really pleased to have you back with us again on Cutting Edge Consciousness. Daryl, how are you? I'm well. How are you both? Good. Super, super well. So look, your, your career, uh, well, you have several careers, as Barnett was just pointing out. But Pick but, a hat. <laughs> which, hat am I, which hat am I wearing now? Exactly. Yes, yes, exactly. Right now we're going to go to uh, your, um, your metaphysical teacher slash, slash uh, channel um, hat. And you are, you are the no... The pointy one. Exactly, the pointy one. Exactly. The, you are no stranger to um, uh, having folks... Um, attempt, yes, attempt in your case to give their power to you. Oh yeah, I don't want that. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> well, like, uh, well, that's you know, that's why I, we, that's, 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 that's why we, that's have, why we, we have, have you. That's why we love you. Because this is really the core distinction: is that um, that I love that response. I don't want that. That that's not what you signed up for. But the truth of a lot of gurus, and that's not what you are, absolutely not. But that's a the, the 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 that is the paradigm of a lot of gurus. Is you give your power over to them, they become your teachers, you become student, and there's a it's, it's a bit vertical. There's a there's a hierarchy here, and you have to uh, subjugate to become their subject, as it were, on some level. At least that's my experience of it. And it could be tainted. You know, I could be in a little bit of my own reaction, wanting to maintain my own, you know, sort of uh, anonymity and personal authority and so forth and so on. Um, but what, do, what are your thoughts on that? Because, again, this is something that you come up against regularly. Every day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, <clears throat> my perspective, based on, you know, the channelings that I've been doing with Bashar, it gives me a very strong sense of being in the center of the concept rather than at either end of the concept. So <clears throat> to express that in the subject that we're discussing, I think that anyone who functions in any capacity as a teacher simultaneously realizes that they are also a student and that the student that comes to them is also their teacher. Mm -hmm. So that you're always getting both aspects in the experience, in the exchange, and that way the teacher is also looking to the student to show them a new perspective, just as the student is looking to the teacher to show them a new perspective. And that way it's a two-way street and it stays in balance. That is brilliant. That is that is from my perspective what you just said. Thank you very much. Yeah. We're, <laughs> we can all go we're home. Go to a commercial break. <laughs> no, no, we'll no, 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 no. <laughs> the 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 offer of that is so again, Barnett, you're going to kick me out of this, but it's so generous. It's showing up in a way that honors everybody, and it has so much space in it for everyone to be exactly where they're at. It's such a generous uh, uh, space. Mm -hmm. what you're talking about, the feeling of it, the frequency of it. Right. Yeah, and the other side of it, let's say the human side of it is, you know, it's, it's also <clears throat> about having enough sense of your own life and your own worth to understand that, you know, I'm still on a journey and I'm still learning things. And it's like I, I have my own life to live and I, I really don't have room in my life to... to have someone hand me their life mm. <laughs> to live it for them, I can't do that. And so that's another reason why um, I'm always, you know, very immediately, you know, very grateful for, you know, what it is that someone <clears throat> brings to me and grateful that they find whatever Bashar might say or sometimes whatever I might say to be helpful. But as soon as they cross that line into kind of a, can you please take my power and do this for me, 
well, it's like there's really no room in my life to live someone else's life. I've got my hands full just living my own. So you this know? is a very, very provocative direction we're going uh, off in, and so I'm going to double down on it. For any of our listeners who think that this may not apply to me too much, <laughs> <laughs> if you are a parent or a, or a uh, child of a parent, if you have siblings, if you have family, if you are in uh, loving relationships, uh, where do we all see ourselves and how frequently uh, do we uh, look upon each other as, uh, or, or look upon others as uh, somehow, if only they would just lead their life my way, or if only I could just uh, satisfy um, my dad, my mom, my child, my if uh, and vice all versa. All of this all, is the if then. All these sorts of if thens and all of these uh, kinds of um, behaviors and relationships that we have that we call loving, mm. but they are really um, um, they you know they are really attempts to earn love, to receive love, the, the acro, all the things that we do for love without knowing that we're loved all along, that are the substitutes, that are really about uh, giving away power to other people and calling it love. So I'm sure you have a lot to say about that. I've heard you speak to that point for more than 25 years now. Yeah, I think that's an excellent point um, because you do see that a lot where people confuse uh, different states of being that are representative, perhaps, of lack of self-worth or desperation, as if they are actually expressions of love, mm -hmm. and they're not. Um, especially it goes into people who have, in some way, shape, or form, been trained into a victim mentality where they feel resentful if someone doesn't give them what they think they need when in fact of course the only way reason they feel that way is they're not giving themselves what they need first uh, and then by doing that of course they wouldn't feel like they would need that from anyone else but if they're in that state of mind where they're kind of coming from desperation and they don't see someone else giving them what they think they need to be fulfilled you know, then it can go in in very dark directions of resentment and and uh, things like that that are that are certainly not the vibration of love. Um, and I just it's just got to start with yourself. You know, it, it really has to start with yourself because you know it's the old saying. You know, misery loves company. When someone is is sort of steeped <clears throat> in that that self loathing. Uh, vibration of misery, well, it's like they're, they're going to feel very alone, and they're going to try and reach out, and they, it is an attempt to connect. It is an attempt to feel the love that they feel is lacking within themselves, but because they're going about it through the auspices of negative tools, so to speak, a negative approach or negative definitions, all they're really doing is reaching out with that negative vibration and trying to make everyone else around them just as negative, just as miserable, so they won't feel alone. But it can also look very, very positive, can't it? It I mean, can. It, it can, can look like, I, yes. I love you to death, you often hear. Or, yeah. uh, or, yeah, um, don't, or, don't do that. Literally. Or yeah. in our, exactly. <laughs> Let, let's not set up that scenario. That but, won't be fun. But people make these sort of unilateral contracts. If I'm the very, very best child right. or I'm the very, very best husband, then uh, you'll, uh, you'll love me or you'll do the dishes or you'll have sex with me or whatever the, whatever the other side of the ledger holds. Right. There, well, there yeah. are these, um, it is a giving away of power and it happens, uh, it's, it's such a stealthy operation. It happens so quickly and yeah. then we feel so misunderstood afterwards when it's not, when it doesn't go our way. Well, that's because there's no real authentic communication going on. So there's no real exchange and no real understanding of who's actually in the relationship because they're really kind of being someone that is not their true self. Well, everyone's objectified in that paradigm. Everyone is, well, exactly. is, is playing a role, 
and and we're doing a two step. You know, we're doing a, a a dance, as it were, and everyone's got got a role to play. The people don't. Yeah. they're not aware of it. <clears throat> yeah, it becomes on an and perhaps on an unconscious level. You know, what can you do for me? Yeah, and you know, as Bashar often talks about, the fundamental purpose of any form of relationship is that everyone in the relationship serve the other people in the relationship to help them become or become more aware of who they truly are. So if everyone really has that intention to support and uplift the other person in the relationship, then that person gets something out of it too automatically. But if they're just kind of in it because they feel deprived and all they are coming from is a place of expecting everyone to fill a hole they're unwilling to fill within themselves, that hole just gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And it often they hurts. don't know that, right? Uh, often no, it's often very you unconscious. have people, it's unconscious, and they think, I'm just such a lover. I'm just so good. Right. They don't really understand that there are agendas of, right. of need or of validation <laughs> or of of um, uh, right. whatever well, it is, and they, they just say, I'm such a giver, and yeah. it just never comes back to me. I know. Well, see, this is, this is why, I, you know, I mean, there is obviously wisdom has been around <laughs> for generations and thousands of years, and I think this really, you know, it, it's a similar idea to why Bashar keeps telling people, you really need to consciously understand the definitions that you're holding on to. You can't leave them in the unconscious mind. And all of that, everything he's ever been saying about finding out what's really going on inside your consciousness and bringing it to light, it all boils down to a phrase that's been around since the beginning of time, and that is simply, know thyself. Mm -hmm. It's really about knowing what's going on in you, being willing to find out what's going on in you, not being afraid to find out what's going on in you. And once you become that transparent to yourself, you'll see where the negative definitions lie, where the positive ones are. It'll be much easier to navigate who you are and bring out those qualities that are truly in alignment, you know, with really who you prefer to be. And in then helping another person by reflecting to them what they need to know to become themselves in the most loving possible way, you are also, again, it's the student-teacher, teacher-student thing. You know, you're, you're learning by doing. You're learning by supporting. You're supporting yourself by supporting another, because it's always a two-way street. And the second part, of course, to the know thyself, which was tagged on later, I think Shakespeare is the one that sort of is most famous for doing it, is be true to yourself. So yes, exactly. but it, it's, a, it's a high bar, though, because there's a lot of easy... Um, uh, the, the, the habitual ways that we um, mm -hmm. self-deny, self-betray, and, mm -hmm. and so forth. We need to take a quick break. When we come back, of course, we'll jump right... Um, Wisdom will be back on the other <laughs> side of the break. <laughs> so stay with us here on Cutting Edge Consciousness. Welcome back to Cutting Edge Consciousness. Thought-provoking discussions and bold ideas from the edge of possibility. We are back on Cutting Edge Consciousness with our dear friend, Daryl Anka. So know thyself and, and also yes thyself. So, yeah, well, uh, and and, and the, well, you've actually, the two things, because one of the things I, I think that's funny is you and I have pluralized that know thyself. Yeah, all exactly. The little mini-me. Know that, all the, that, that know all the, the fragments. All, know all the pieces so you can put Humpty Dumpty back together again. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the part, though, that we were talking about earlier that I think is really critical, um, and I just want to draw a little quick distinction. The way I view, Daryl, the work that you do, it's not about teaching the truth or truths. It's about access, right? So what the information is, it's an access point. And yeah. it, 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 that's a big distinction, though, teaching versus supporting people and accessing it's right. providing tools by which they can access whatever they need from their point of view, from their perspective. Yes, and the premise, though, is the knowing uh, is innate, and the the revealing, or the peeling away of the resistance and or the programming <laughs> is is helping people to draw out what they need in that moment. But the yes. knowing is innate. The well-being is innate. Sure. It's sure. not something, this is, this, is the, this is the craziness, is people show up believing, and I, I know they do this with you, they definitely do it with the guru personality, uh, that, this, that, that you or, or whoever is going to fix them. So the, 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 wh where the uh, flaw is, 
isn't the idea that anything is broken. Yes, of course. Um, you know, there are <clears throat> perspectives that may be out of alignment with who they truly are. It doesn't mean someone is broken. It just means that they've been taught to use a tool that isn't necessarily as effective as it could be in allowing them to discover who they are. Now, any process that they go through, however, of course, has value. So uh, in, in the ultimate sense of it, <clears throat> it doesn't really matter whether they go through this by having to go through one negative belief after another and discover this and discover that, because really the process is the point of why we're here. We're here to experience ourselves, and we're here to discover ourselves, you know, from new points of view. So we're not broken, but we are exploring ways in which we can learn who we are, remember who we are, from a new perspective. Yeah, the challenge, I think, is the habit. So in the wanting to be fixed, you know, Barnett, we've said this before that, you know, sometimes the seeker, you know, you've said this about people in their 20s, in your 20s, <laughs> that you have a thirst is really critical. Uh, I'm repeating mm -hmm. almost verbatim what you've said in the past to me. But if you found the well, this is where the guru character... Where you think you found the well. Well, this is where the, that can be a little dangerous, is that you, that you think you found the well. The, the point of the 20s is not to find the well. It's to have the thirst, which then, right. you know, which then creates all these opportunities for discovering oneself. But if, the, if you really did have all the answers, if you got all the answers as a download at 20, and that's it, you're done... Um, that's not the, I mean, what you were just saying a minute ago, Daryl, the whole point of our human experience is this kind of process of finding new layers and finding mm -hmm. new aspects in this whole journey, as it were. Right. The journey is the destination. Yeah. Period. <laughs> no, no, well, that shut everyone up. <laughs> okay. We're done. That's right. I guess we found the well. <laughs> There's the well. That's right. We have Demolition Derby uh, uh, commentary now coming, live commentary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't you have an infomercial here? We do. We have wisdom will follow. I got so, so that is so true. I wanted to... Um, I want to cover a couple of things. First of all, a, a few personal things. Uh, Last you were on here, you were just um, getting ready for the uh, for the um, online release of uh, your last film. And I, I wanted to know how that went. Yes, uh, it went very well. Actually, we um, we made a distribution agreement with Gaim TV. Mm. Fabulous. And so it's available through their subscription service at this point. It's also available internationally as an online download through Fast Spring. Uh, <clears throat> both of these can be accessed uh, individually or they can be accessed through our uh, ziafilms.com site on the Dearly Departed page. So yes, Dearly Departed is now out there and available, DVD and downloads internationally and domestically. Now, we also want to catch up. Where are you with the other project you mentioned last time you were on, which was sort of tracking the Bashar, the Bashar journey? The Bashar documentary, which is called First Contact, is now in post-production. Nice! So uh, that's moving along. Uh, we're just uh, doing some final editing we're waiting for visual effects to come in. Um, you know, we have yet to do um, our narration, our music, our, you know, color mm -hmm. correction and all that. Uh, so I'm imagining sometime after the first of the year, uh, it will be complete. And then we uh, see what uh, happens when we submit to film festivals and see if we can't get it into theaters through a distributor. That's exciting. It's also fun. I mean, I know right now you're in the grind part of it, and both Barnett and I have been around film enough, obviously Barnett on the uh, other side of the camera than me, but that the it's still exciting. It's awesome to it's see so fun. what what is this going to... Because uh, we're talking about the journey part, and you mm -hmm. know, every creative process, at least for me, is this journey. I always start off thinking I know what I'm doing, um, but it always... <laughs> you, you, uh, the, 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 the gift is it evolves into something, right? That becomes Absolutely. a totally different thing than I thought <clears throat> I was doing. Well, you know, I think the thing that I love about now, you know, writing, directing, producing, it's such a, an intense focus of creation. You really, I, personally, for me, speaking for myself, I really get to apply all of the tools 
that have come through the channeling in the last 30 years, and I get to watch them work. We, Barnett, I, I was just talking about this. That's yeah, awesome. It's always a, a lab. It's always a laboratory. Way. It's a little, it's exactly. a little kind of uh, meta-science project. <clears throat> exactly, because it's so intensely focused, and, and so um, the time frame is so short overall, because it, 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 it's a very intense process over a relatively short period of time in your life, and so everything is highly magnified and highly amplified, and that's where you're like right on the cutting edge when you're doing something like that that you love to do. I think that's one of the reasons why it's so important to act on your excitement is it creates this laboratory experience where everything is so magnified, and when you apply these ideas and these tools that you're learning in that scenario, you really get to see in a very accelerated way what the result of using these tools is, and it really reinforces and anchors the idea in you that these tools can work, that you can discover yourself in a new way very quickly and very powerfully. It's, it's a really intense and really fun experience. It's algebra. My father taught <laughs> my ta- father taught algebra for 30-something years, and, you know, uh, people would often say algebra is so boring. And my father would say it is really boring if you are only focused on the formulas and the you know the sort of right. problem solving in the numbers game. But where algebra gets fascinating is when you get to the word problems. And my father would love these word problems because in algebra it's really interesting. The word problem, the practical application, is what makes algebra so fascinating. Because mm-hmm. by itself you think algebra. I never use algebra, but the the problem solving and the app the applying of, you know, the principles of algebra in the word problem, in the experience of it, right. is totally different. You actually use it all the time. Yeah. I mean, even even the simple idea of, you know, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C kind of idea, you're always doing you're always that doing you're deductive assessing, reasoning. Always. You're assessing things in your life, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. My, that's my father's favorite thing when people are like, I learned algebra in high school. I never use it. And well, he loves the, to go, wait a minute. The interesting <laughs> thing about that yeah. is that uh, it is a, there are nested truths there. And so when we do deductive reasoning, we've certainly, um, we've right. acted as though the present is the result of the past for, uh, right. for well on to 7 billion of the years of the straight line. And much of what is... Um, we are all exploring now, is that, yes, that is true, and wait, but wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. In fact, I think it's actually most people, like, you know, look at it kind of backwards. Like, you know, people are saying, well, you know, I've learned algebra, and I never use it in my life. Yeah. And they're missing the point that algebra is just revealing another Truth. way of yeah. looking at what you actually are doing in your life all the time. This it's like is... you are doing this all the time. Algebra is just another way of expressing how to say you're doing something in your life all the time. So it's not like we're not learning algebra and then not using it. It's that we're doing algebra all the time. And what we call mathematical algebra is just another way of looking at what we're doing all the time. Well, and people reduce the algebra down to just the sequence of equations and learning how the thing works without the applied piece, because it's the applied piece that's the entire game. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. We're doing the applied piece in our lives instinctively. The mathematical representation is just a way of sort of quantifying what we're doing right. already. It's this just a revelation a... of what we're doing. It's not teaching you something you're not doing and then expecting you to apply it as if you've never done it. It's just the mathematical expression of something you're already doing. It is like looking at our own shadows. Uh, yeah. These are... When we um, become aware of what we have always been doing, but we we do it with an awareness, now it has the potential to become a choice and a creative act. And the delight that you expressed earlier about um, pursuing a creative project, I believe that we do creative projects as a way to to broaden, uh, to, to deconstruct our conditioning, to, mm. to shatter our conditioning and mm-hmm. open to more possibilities. The <clears throat> act of creativity is, in that way, love's work. It absolutely, it's like throwing a grenade into your structured imagination, to your blueprint yeah. of conditions, it's blowing a, it. A, we think we know where we're going when we start a creative project. <laughs> 
Well, we kind of feel like we have to because we kind of sometimes have to trick ourselves into moving in a certain Or direction. you'd never leave the room. You'd, you'd never, never start. start. <laughs> we, yeah. we, we brought this up as like a target. So you start off by aiming at the target. But then the target but, moves. But then, but then you know at some point you can move the target around. I mean, sure. I, I think people don't. I mean, you know, so the folks who don't realize they can move the target around are a little tortured because they keep missing the target. And then sure. there's this thing of, yeah, but that's how it's supposed to work. you know. And then at some exactly. point we get that. We go, oh, wait a minute. Like I was aiming the arrow and shooting it. The target gets to move. Who knew? You yeah, know? I think I think what you discover in in going into a creative endeavor like that because it is you're right it is a crucible. It helps you melt down yeah. all the rigid ideas that you bring into the experience, mm. and it allows them to kind of flow and recrystallize in a new idea. So really, it is the process of breaking yourself down and reinventing yourself constantly. And I think it's. In, in that sense, it's a process of going from structure to freedom. In a how you way. do a creative, mm. how you undertake a creative act, a creative project is uh, is a um, is really an indication of how you do your entire life. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you well, bring an awareness to it, you bring an awareness to a creative act. <laughs> it doesn't remain in isolation. It bleeds yep. over to every other and every corner, nook and corner of your life. Well, there's yeah, a, it there's a, everything. There's mm-hmm. a reverence for the discovery. There's a reverence right. for the shifts and the just adjustments versus a resistance to that because that's the part that makes it painful. If, if we have it held so rigidly and it has to be one way, right. that's a recipe for suffering. But if we really get like, oh, bend and turn. Hmm. How mm-hmm. do I get curious about this? How do I because you know, that, that's the gig. That's can I get curious about this and let it be <clears throat> its own unfolding? So right, let's, and, you know, let's talk about the energetic uh, frequencies. I, I know you have a lot to say about this, and I'm eager to hear it. The the energies um, that are that are expressing through creative acts, uh, and as you said earlier, the mathematics is always there. Likewise, the energies are always there. Mm-hmm. We we uh, we. Um, make alliance with these creative acts in order to reveal these energies to ourselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to the extent that we can tune into these energies and frequencies, um, we are in a very a powerful cha-cha-cha with them. Uh, they, yeah. begin, they begin to express through us and not vice versa. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, in that sense, we become more transparent to it, become an open conduit and allow those things to flow through us more easily without the resistance. And we get to experience who we are. You know, we get to experience the uniqueness of how that energy, which is available to everyone, flows through us, mm. how it expresses itself through us. And we begin to appreciate not only the connection that we have to source, but we begin to appreciate ourselves by seeing the unique expression of that energy as it expresses itself through us. You know? There's a piece of language with this that I want to bring up. Mm-hmm. Um, and and maybe the the spirit of right. So what's the spirit of the project? Like you know, when I embark on something, it has this. Again, it's a it's a it has its own trajectory. Mm-hmm. And there's a moment in time where I can really like kind of get the spirit. Oh, I get the spirit of this. You know, I don't know. It's just a piece of language. You get that the I soul like. of it as well. You yeah. have you want to get both sides. They're both they're distinct flavors. The spirit of a creative mm. enterprise and the soul of a creative enterprise. One is an animism and one is a dynamism. All right, you got some explaining to do. <laughs> no, I'm going to toss. I'm going to toss it to Daryl because I know he's going to. Fifty cent words again, Barnett. <laughs> well, how much do you owe me now on those for those words? <laughs> but there is this sort of there is this dynamic uh, quality of making and doing in a creative project, as well as a uh, this sort of um, soulful um, just being into it, falling into something that is already there. They both they both come together in this chance crossing of something special. Well, that's what I really enjoy about doing something like that, is it uses all of you. Hmm. All of you. It, it really ne- All of you needs to be present. Your, your mental self, your spiritual self, your emotional self, your physical self, have to work together, have to find a way to harmonize in order to actually create what you're creating. So it's very conducive to allowing all those different aspects of yourself to find a way to work in harmony. And it's very empowering and uh, just it's a heady experience. So whether you're making a uh, film mm-hmm. or, um, or a pot roast or, sandwich. Mm-hmm. or a relationship <laughs> or a business or a life, the, exactly. the same energies apply. Yeah, absolutely. They're just different expressions of the same thing. 
I mean, it's like, you know, that appreciation comes. It's like, you know, if you're making a painting, you're making a drawing, I'm just going to use the analogy of a, of a painting. You know, for a certain thing, there is just that one color that will work. Mm. And how much do you appreciate it when you can find that one color and put it on the canvas, and it's perfect? It's exactly what you want it to be. So it's it's appreciating all the different colors and shades and tones because it, it, it creates something unique when you put them together in the way that you put them together. It's something to appreciate because it's something new. It's a new perspective. It's a new expression. It's you know, a, even though it's all the same tools everyone's using, it's a new expression. Yeah, it's similar to like an insight, right? Which is yeah. is that it's a synthesis. Like uh, all of these ideas that I may have heard before, in a moment that I kind of get them in a unique way that's mine, it's an insight. Mm-hmm. And th- right. I have a lot of personal like reverence, again, to use that word, for... Oh, it's an, th- that insight is the magic. It isn't the information that's important. It's the synthesis. It's the right. moment it becomes true for me and, and applicable in my own life that there's some energy that is sparks. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then, and that to me brings us right full circle back around to where we started this conversation when you're talking Phew. about the idea of a teacher. <laughs> yeah. That's what a teacher does. A really good teacher inspires a student to find their own unique insights into things. That's what you're being taught, is how to be yourself, how to find your own unique insights, not to simply fill you up with things that work for the teacher. The teacher can use the things that work for the teacher to give you examples of things that might work for you or some variation thereof. But when a teacher really is teaching and really also being a student, What they're doing is they're giving you a vibration. They're giving you an experience that allows you to figure out how to have those insights from your perspective. And when you can express that from your perspective and you add that to the world, then you are making the world richer. And that's exciting. And and it's exciting to the teacher because the insight is a reflection of their own insight. And it's similar to Barnett and I talk about a soulful conversation, which we always have with you because there is this process uh, where everyone's contributing to a space in the middle, right? A lot of times we have guests on and, and they, they have an agenda. They want to sell a book. It's okay. I mean, that's fine. We're not, we understand that, but we always want them to put that down so that we can all discover something which we'll call the space in, in between us that right. gets filled by our own perspective, our own contribution. And out of it, this is the magic of the creative process. Something emerges that we can all go, wow, we co-created that. How cool. Exactly. But, and that's why I love film because it's such a collaborative process. Yes. You have so many people giving so many different perspectives. And, and when you learn to work together and honor each other and appreciate each other, it all comes together and creates something that is more than the sum of all the parts. And that's exciting. Well, I honor and appreciate you, Daryl. And uh, you as well, both it, of you. Yeah, Thank we, you so we, much. And you too, Spencer. Yeah, Spencer's <laughs> in the room, too. Uh, it's too Spencer's giving you a little uh, smile there. A big go. smile. That's a big smile for you, Spencer. We are always <laughs> so grateful, of course, to have you in our room, uh, hanging out with us. Next well, time. I, I, love, I love being in the room. I'm very grateful to be asked. I say we get you back when the uh, the newest uh, the Bashar documentary is released because that's going to be a gas to talk about. So yep. we want to get a chance to look at that before it's out, and then we'll have you back to talk about that when it's. Uh, we'll when bring it's, the popcorn. Absolutely, <laughs> the popcorn. absolutely, guys. Thank you. Love right, right, you, Daryl. Right, my speak to you soon. All right, for those of you listening, uh, Daryl's going to go away, but we're going to stay, um, and we'll be back in about two minutes after the commercials to wrap things up here on Cutting Edge Consciousness. Stay with us. Welcome back to Cutting Edge Consciousness, thought-provoking discussions and bold ideas from the edge of possibility. And we're back here on Cutting Edge Consciousness. Freeman Michaels here with Barnett Bain. Uh, Yes, it was, um, you know, it's very special every time we have Daryl on because, because as you said it during the break, there is this uh, very, very juicy space that is created. We never quite know where it's going to go. It doesn't matter. But it, it is like this spiral. It just goes deeper and deeper and deeper. And um, for certainly for me, I always, I can always um, 
tap into a feeling. There's like an attunement that happens. Mm. It says I, I'm I'm digging for like I, I'm in a diamond mine and I'm digging, digging, digging. And there's there's something that leads you deeper and deeper and deeper. You can feel it in the body. You, there's mm. there's something about that happens in a creative connection. It's a soulful you feel, conversation. You feel known yeah. and uh, and you're heading in in the same direction. It, it tacks left. It tacks right. And it's always, um, there's always discovery around the next corner. There's always a diamond to be discovered. The, here's what's so fascinating about, we have Daryl on, and um, there's a, people who tune in who are frustrated that we're having a conversation because what they're tuning in for is some of Daryl's teaching, which is fine. He, he's amazing when he... To, uh, when he uh, channels Bashar and he just drops bomb after bomb after bomb, which he does. It's amazing work. I'm, but that's very, we, we made a choice from the very beginning, uh, w based on a personal relationship with Daryl, to have him on as Daryl. And we can talk about the work he does with Bashar. And so what we're filling out for all the people who love Bashar is a conversation that is not the conversation that, not, not what they're expecting often. Sort of a way for people to have a connection with Daryl that is not how he is generally related to. Exactly. But the pushback that we sometimes get is, why are, why are you guys talking? Like, be quiet. Just ask him questions and let him be the wisdom teacher. And what you I- You just invited probably about 5,000 comments. It's okay. Comments. Yeah. There's a place for that. And I, I look, it's, I, if it's coming from, um, and it, it could be, I don't think it is, but I mean, it could be coming from my own sort of wanting to have something to say or something like yeah. this. I don't know. But the last piece that we were just talking about with what's so amazing about Daryl is the way he shows up and that we all contribute to something. We all get to have an idea and it is a conversation and there's really something so valuable, at least for us. I mean, we've based this show now four and a half years of doing this on, we're going to have a conversation. We're not going to do an interview. We're going to have a conversation where we can put something in the middle and everyone can go at it, right? That's what well, we tried to do. We, we, that is what we tried to do. We, we said, what happens when we go out to dinner, we go out to dinner with our, between, amongst ourselves or with friends and um, many of the people that are on this show uh, we have gone to dinner with and um, there is a quality of a conversation that happens there, that arises there, that's never a tutorial. Right. Um, there is quality of conversation that we thought, this is it. there's something very special here and we thought this is something we would like to, to share and it's something we would like to explore. Is there an art to um, stewarding and to uh, participating in and to creating a space for this kind of conversation? There's, there's clearly an art to it. Um, we fall into it at dinner and, and when we're out with people, but to actually intentionally generate it can we consciously make that that's what inspired the show that's what what the show grew out of that and uh, every time we have daryl on it's it, delicious. Uh, it affirms it's a great the, meal the, it affirms that choice it is a terrific meal yeah and 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 listen one of the things that you and we I also discover how much uh, farther we have to go. I, every time well, we do it, so I realize look, it's 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 like a dance. It's, yeah, it's like learning how it's like learning really a new art form. But it's 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 what Daryl said about loving the process. You begin to love the process and know that you're going to discover and be discovered by the process of a soulful conversation. Um, it's interesting because one of the things that uh, we do is either you or I or us and our wives or us and whomever are out to lunch or dinner or whatever, and you and I have this little signal that we should drop a mic down. Like we always say, we should drop a. Mic yeah, thing. I mean we've we've been so again, folks. This is something we do. Yes, we should just do that. Actually, we should just pull out I an know, iPhone. We and should. Yeah, we've, we so we, for for the last uh, again four and a half years, we've been doing this once a week. But and, and we've said this before as well. But we don't just do it once a week. We do it a number of times a week in in our own conversations. You and I check in a few times a, a, mm. during the week. Just hey, how you doing as friends? So what we're bringing to this uh, experience that you all are witnessing, the cutting edge consciousness experience, isn't relegated to just our once a week. This is what we do for fun, you know. Um, and that's the quality we want to bring. <clears throat> and then our hope is it has value for folks. Well, we certainly hope that. Uh, it's a little lab. It's like a little laboratory. Yeah. And, and it's a lot of fun to do. And it's a lot of fun to kind of do a focused, a concentrated, focused hour where we see if we can 
uh, uplift and inspire others, ourselves, whoever is listening. We hope that uh, we hope that it's working for you too. Explore an idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anything else that we have to cover? I think we only have a couple um, minutes <laughs> left. <laughs> no, I can't seven. figure. Oh, that's seven. We have lots of time. Let's yeah, kick yeah, back. You, it's so funny. Every time we get into it, well, really our, our producer just walked out, and well, I thought that was who the needs end him? Of the <laughs> <laughs> for sure, that's the who end needs, of everything. Who needs the guy with the clock? Um, there was something that was. Uh, I'm looking down at this piece of paper because I always scribble as we go uh, thoughts or ideas. Um, you know, to our point while you're looking. To our point uh, with Daryl about uh, the nature of creative acts, I'm paraphrasing here, but Picasso once said something to the effect that um, uh, creativity shatters our perception of the world. Hmm. It shatters it in order to rebuild it in, in new ways. Hmm. Completely shatters it in order to expand a sense of vision. And, you know, when you think of the work of Picasso, it, it no long, that's not just words. You know, we didn't, until uh, prior to seeing Cubist art, we had no conception that, um, that you could view uh, a world in, in, in simultaneous dimensions and, mm. and simultaneous planes. So he's, he means this quite literally. And more and more, I understand uh, the the depth and the truth of it. Uh, that creative acts, they do redefine us. If we come out of a creative act the same as we went into it, it was we not. A, it. it wasn't a creative act. Mm -hmm. It was an act of rote. Well, this is the challenge, and again, this is not a new conversation for us. Of so much of what we're calling creative is not. It's a repurposing. So basically, we're we're in this act of trying to replicate something that's already been done because it's been successful in a particular way. I mean, this is the challenge of creative act, the sequel. Yeah, it's the but it's a challenge for I think most. It's so interesting. This whole conversation tracks sort of one thread for me, mm. which is the conditioning and the storylines that I've bought into about what happiness and fulfillment are. And what I wasn't told but came to discover is that happiness and fulfillment is a discovery process. It's a process of, you know, I'll know it when I feel it, you know, and, and that there are these particular expressions for me that are uh, pretty good arenas, pretty good places to explore. And then the little nuggets pop up and I go, oh, because that's the brilliance of the creative process is it's a discovery. And it's what Daryl said uh, 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 that, you know, you slap down a color and you go, that's the color I was looking for. But before you found that, it was this blank space that needed something and that ability to wait for it, wait for it or search for it, search for it until you really find it. And then the it is revealed in the experience of slapping it down and seeing it and going, oh, that's it. Well, another way of, uh, I think, saying what you just spoke is that when we go into a create, when we engage in a creative experience wholeheartedly, not mm. a rote experience, when mm. we engage in a creative experience, we are biting off more than we think we can chew. Mm. On purpose, yeah. On purpose, mm. always. If we are uh, doing a uh, an experience that we absolutely know that we can handle, then we are not pushing the boundary. It's, it's, it is not a creative expression. There's no discovery in it. Let me repeat what I know. Exactly. Boring. Now I'm just um, doodling. I'm just doing how many, my... How many times have you had three guys sitting there having what they're calling a conversation and repeating the stuff they know? Yeah. Yeah. Please help me, because that is not going to be You're always... Fun. Your reach is always exceeding your grasp. And in, in that way, somehow inch by inch, moment by moment, your um, grasp seems to extend as if by magic and, and suddenly you can, you can grab these concepts. We grow, we become more only when we're focused on a distant horizon. Hmm. Uh, and with every creative act, we bring that horizon closer. Hmm, I love that. And I love the idea that I'm intentionally biting off more than I can choose so I can grow. So Sometimes can grow that is terrifying. Can. Oh it my good, be. what if I fail? What yeah, if I'm exposed? Yeah, no, I what if I... Totally. You that know, comes along too. Yeah. I mean, I won't go into detail, but you know, I'm embarking on a, a what, I, what for me is a pretty huge project. And, uh, and how many times do I get 
get scared and doubt myself uh, daily, you mm-hmm. know. But uh, yeah. that that little tinge is actually at this point in my life an indication that I'm on the right track. You know, I've actually learned to come. I've, I've come to trust the sort of. Uh, inherent discomfort, right? Because the creative process, if it's authentic, has this element of risk. We've talked about this with acting and so forth. My acting coach used to always say, what's the risk? Because that's the that's where you want to play. You want to play at your edge. You're balancing uh, the known with uh, with the unknown. You're balancing the known with a with a beautiful chaos. Mm. If you if the alchemy of that balance is, if there's a little too much fear and then the beautiful chaos becomes a, it becomes a nightmarish chaos mm. that ends badly but uh it, it takes a quality of courage yeah. to go forward even if you don't know even if you're uncertain as to the outcome and it takes um it just takes that self-awareness, but you have well, to. The other you piece to you layer in usually is it in. also takes the expectation that it will work out. There's a deep you knowing that this will all work out. You know that that piece, because if you lose that, then it does become nightmarish. But there's this sense that there's something yet to be discovered that I'm so committed to that I'm willing to risk everything I've known in service to that. You and said on this show that energy follows attention. Mm. That expectation, that is. Um, that is both the harbinger and the hope in the same place. Mm. That is your beacon. The, the energy follows that. And then like a tractor beam, you know, in Star Trek, you, you uh, hold to that, you, you commit to the creative process, and it'll take you there. It'll take you home. And it helps to draw in some folks who understand that as well, who are willing to play at the edge. And yeah. so we are so grateful today that Daryl Anka joined us. We are so grateful that you all joined us because, you know, by part- participating in this, you're hopefully uh, we're pushing some of your edges. And uh, we'll see you job. next time. Thanks for tuning in.